spoke with the president and founder of American Islamic Forum for Democracy, Dr. Chasser. Well, good, good afternoon. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here. I'm humbled to be here. And, uh, you know, listening to the Rolling Stones, I'm wondering how many uh, Islamic countries would allow me to enter a stage uh, with the Rolling Stones playing. But we're here to not only start you up, but shake you up. And, you know, in the theme of the Trump administration taking on the establishment, in my time with you today, I want to share with you my goal, my mission as an American, as a patriot, taking on the Islamic establishment. Because it's not about being Muslim, it's about the Islamists. And by the end of our time together, I hope you understand the difference. I want to thank Jeff Hunt and the entire team for inviting me, for the courage to invite me. You know, he was talking about death threats before, and now uh, with uh, AOC and all of them basically uh, hiccuping breath death threats at anyone that uh, um, criticizing them as somehow invoking death threats. There are those of us who really have had death threats for our work. And uh, at the end of the day, it's what's about freedom. It's the price we pay for freedom. And when my family escaped persecution in Syria in the late 60s, they embraced American freedom, American liberty, and instilled in me the idea, the understanding that there's no place I could practice my faith more freely than here in America. And I served in the Navy for 11 years and uh, felt that I wanted to be part of the most moral fighting force on the planet because my parents escaped the most evil fighting force on the planet, which was Syria and its regime. And ultimately, I'm an American conservative, and I'm not a conservative just because I say so, but if you look at my track record, my history of the ideas that I've endorsed from free markets to strong national security to uh, pro-immigration, but pro-border, pro-wall, pro-right uh, immigration, not just any immigration, I believe that conservative values are what will keep us strong. Abraham Lincoln, I think, had it right when he said America was the last best hope for mankind. But he also had it right when he said, America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. And I think there's nothing more, more apropos to that quote than what we are seeing in some of the leading Islamic leaders in America who are Islamists, who really don't see America for a, a force of good, who don't see uh, uh, what we do for freedom as a force of good, but rather are on the side of socialism, are on the side of Islamism and political Islam in the Islamic State. So in this era, I think Ralph Waldo Emerson had it right. There are always two parties, the party of the past and the party of the future, the establishment and the movement. And in honor of President Trump, I've used this as a theme today, which is what is the Islamic establishment and who are they? I am certainly not part of it. I'm proud to say that I'm not part of it. I think the future of religious freedom in Muslim-majority countries is dependent on the movement, reform movement, and not dependent on their establishment. So let's define Islamism. Islamism, political Islam, Islamic State ideology, Sharia State ideology, these are all synonyms for basically the belief that, in contradiction to the religious interfaith leaders that you saw here before, the Islamic State believers believe that the state and government and religion are combined into one, that the government is God and it will invoke upon people its inversion of a particular faith, and that be it Islam. Be it the Iranian Islamists of the Khomeinists, be it the Muslim Brotherhood Islamists of Egypt, any Islamic movement, Jamaat Islami in Pakistan, you see the emblem there of the Muslim Brotherhood, and the Muslim Brotherhood under that in Arabic, and their motto is, and they've said it here in America, Allah is our objective, the Prophet is our leader, the Quran is our law, Jihad is our way, dying in the way of Allah is our highest hope. These Islamists, these viral movements across the planet want to die for their cause. I'm here to tell you as an American patriot that the only antidote to that is Muslims who not only don't want to die for that cause, but want to die for America against theocrats and against theocracy. But. But the enemy is not only viral Islamists, but it is the corporate Islamists, those who, some of whom are our allies, and I hats off to President Trump for recalibrating the, dis, the disarray that President Obama left Middle East geopolitics, if you will, because of his siding with Iran, because of his uh, I'll, I'll, fealty for Turkish Islamists, the Muslim Brotherhood, and others. It just left our interest in complete disarray, and President Trump has 
in many ways appropriately recalibrated that back to where we were in the 20th century, which is the Sunni side was with America, the Shia Islamists of, of Iran and Syria were with Russia. But that's not where the story is going to end. It never will end there. It's a cycle of continued violence if we don't look to advancing liberty and religious freedom across what I call these people the Islamic mafia of the planet, uh, the dictators who really rule under Islamic law. Some of them might be our allies because of petro-Islam and the, will the willingness to want to sell their oil to us. But at the end of the day, their states don't share our values. Their states uh, uh, do things for window dressing and not really for reform. And until the king of Saudi Arabia or any of these monarchs actually start having clerics and the long beards and the long robes reinterpreting Sharia in a 21st century school of thought, that's when real reform will happen. Until then, most of the other reforms are simply window dressing. And there for the last 50 years, now recently they've disavowed themselves of the Muslim Brotherhood movement, many of these monarchs, but before that, over the last 50 years, they've helped plant and grow and fertilize these Islamic movements that are viral movements of sort of a populist belief that Muslims should coalesce together and collectivize under a flag of the Muslim Brotherhood or the Islamists. And as a Muslim, I find that offensive. Yes, we have a debate to, have, to be had, no different than the founding fathers had within the house of Christianity. There is a house, there is a debate within the house of Islam that the theocrats don't represent our faith, that we can establish governments that are based in the equality of all under law, all under God, and that we reject anyone, especially men in robes and beards, telling us which form of faith to practice and making our laws for us. So I ask you, are we fighting, are we advocating for the same rigor of Western values and liberty as the Islamists are fighting globally here? And if you look across the planet, where is religious freedom defended? You'll see that the only places where it really is by culture is in the West, in Europe and especially in America, Canada, and in Western countries and NATO countries. Now, if you look at Muslim populations in that area, there's a small sliver that shares those ideals and have the laboratory here in the West to do the work for religious freedom, for the reforms, the deep reforms in Islamic thought and interpretation of our scripture that needs to happen for change that can happen, which is in that sliver in the areas in the West. Now, in the Muslim majority countries, they all live under some form of autocracy, be it monarchies or theocracies or military dictatorships. And people like me, even under governments that are allies like Egypt or Saudi Arabia have a life expectancy of a few months. You can't advocate for reforms and advocacy of the free speech of, of individuals to speak against the clerics in governments that are theocracy. My book is about that. My battle of my life has been about that. It was why I'm not only an American patriot, but why my family escaped and embraced Americanism from the day they stepped off the airplane and came here legally seeking asylum. My father's translation of the Quran, I think, is one of the things that ultimately taught me how to look at my scripture in a way that was compatible with American ideals. But it really doesn't have the same fuel as the petrodollars of the billions spent on translations of the Quran that are antithetical to Western ideals and need to be dispelled. You'll see even individuals like this man in the center, Siraj Wahaj, who when I was in a Navy uniform in 1995, held up the Quran at the Islamic Society of North America and said that it is his mission as a Muslim to make America into an Islamic state and replace the Constitution with the Quran. I went to the mic at a conference larger than this and said, this is sedition, I reject your values. And this is in 95, just to tell you I'm not a post 9-11 activist in this issue. And also to tell you that this man is still on boards of many major Islamic organizations. And yet I show you pictures of that New Mexico compound where his children and grandchildren were established terror compounds, and yet he disavowed himself of violence. You see the main fatwa factory in America produced fatwas that American Muslims should not participate in our Pentagon, in our border services, in our police, etc., because they are anti-Muslim. Yet none of you probably have ever heard of the American Muslim Jurists Assembly, which is producing fatwas, religious rulings for most American Muslims. We are asleep, we are anesthetized because of political correctness to what's happening in our shores that's destroying the most valuable assets in this global battle for religious liberty, which are American Muslim patriots. 
And yet in Congress now, we see icons that are becoming icons for the left that are representing this merger. We, I've known about a long time, and by the way, as much as I detest almost everything Ilhan Omar stands for, except the immigration icon that she represents as a welcoming country that embraced her family, everything else of her ideas I reject. And yet she somehow becomes a representative of American Muslims. Rashida Tlaib there becomes a representative of American Muslims despite her vicious anti-Semitism and anti-Israel stances and promotion of BDS, which is basically a global movement to do away with Israel. And yet the platforming of them, I will tell you, is actually a good thing because Americans are finally waking up to who is leading our community. These are the ideas in the mosques across America. The, these individuals did not come to the standing they have by accident. They came there because of a byproduct of an ideology of Islamism that sees Muslims as victims, that sees America as the oppressor, that ignores the Maduros of Venezuela, ignores the Islamists of the Khomeinis of Iran and the Wahhabis and the Islamists, the real cancers in our community, and blames the beacon of freedom that welcomes their family for their own ills. So you're starting to get a clinic into that and their platforming is beginning to educate Americans, but now we need to take them on. And we take them on by recognizing that American Muslim identity is something we need to engage. Are we engaging Muslims that believe in dying for America? Or are we engaging Muslims that believe the only thing they die for is jihad? I served, as I said, in the Navy, and I think ultimately that many American Muslims believe in service, be it in the military or wherever they may serve, and yet their voices are being drowned out by the polarization that's happening, especially from the left that uses identity politics as a bludgeon against anybody that wants to take them on. And they exploit my faith, which is an idea, and they racialize Islam. Islam is not a race, it's an idea. And they gaslight all of you and they gaslight America into thinking you're racist because you want to take on not a faith, but a political ideology of theocracy that is incompatible with Americanism. My son and I visited the Jefferson Memorial and read the inscription there that says, I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. That was Jefferson speaking to another doctor, Benjamin Rush, in 1800. So the tie of God to freedom, God to religious liberty, is something I am with you to the death. And this is something that American Muslims, many of whom have come here to celebrate and embrace, and we are a part of our Muslim Liberty Project, and our kids are part of that legacy. And yet there are other schools like this one in Philadelphia that's teaching their kids basically mantras from ISIS about chopping off heads, crushing Israel, crushing the Jew, etc. And these are things that you need to know about. These are not one-offs. The Muslim American Society that has an affiliation with that school has many schools around the country that I think it's sad that you have an Israeli organization, Memory, that's putting out videos. They just put out a video two days ago about all the radical sermons in American mosques from an Israeli organization. Where are the Muslim organizations in America like ours? Where are the American organizations taking on these sermons that are happening in our mosques? They're hard to find because of political correctness, because of fear, because of a lack of courage from our political leadership. This is AJ Plus. They have millions following them. It's a anti-Semitic platform out of Qatar, state media out of Qatar, and yet they reach out to millennials. Here was a Holocaust denying video that they pulled off within a few hours and yet used every means necessary to make sure none of you could see that video and yet you'll still find it on my Facebook despite all of their legal threats and otherwise. They're working with our enemies, be it uh, um, Al Jazeera, be it Mint Press, which is a pro-Assad uh, newspaper out of Minnesota, RT America, and others that want to portray America as the devil. You see them having pundits across CNN, MSNBC, mainstreaming candidates for governor in Michigan and elsewhere, and yet the pro-America, patriotic American Muslim voice often has few voices. I think ultimately you'll look leaders across Europe are beginning to take on the mantra of the left. Sarkozy said, where you see a great leader, there is no populism. Where's the populism in Saudi Arabia or Russia? If the great leadership leaves the table, the populist leaders come and replace him. Modern democracy destroys leadership, he said. And then he goes on to say, the great leaders of the world come from countries that are not great democracy. This is President Sarkozy of France 
talking at an Abu Dhabi opening of the Louvre. He should have his presidential libraries, if they exist, removed from Paris to be saying that. And yet this is what's happening with the merger of the left and the Islamists is they're beginning to denigrate our, our, or our institutions that are at the core democratic. The Arab awakening was an opportunity for freedom to begin to spread. It did not. In Syria, it has grown into even a genocide and uh, half of their population is displaced. For change to happen, studies have shown all you need is 10%. We saw it with the Tea Party and the conservative movement and you saw it across the Middle East with the Arab awakening. All it took was at least 10% of the population to get to the streets and those governments fell. The days of those governments are numbered and yet the threat to the West with immigration is significant and if we don't start vetting and taking sides just like we did in the Cold War if we don't start vetting and taking sides believing in those who share our values not just about what they're escaping but are they welcoming and coming in because they embrace Americanism Republic ideology of freedom and liberty or are they simply trying to bring over their theocracy their Islamism their communism into our country well I wouldn't welcome them and we should not but like my family, we should welcome those who share our values. And that's part of our national security. That should be part of our public-private partnerships and institutions. Our institution is about building, just like in the Cold War, many of the think tanks in Washington now are byproducts of the Cold War, be it AEI, Heritage, or otherwise. American Islamic Forum for Democracy, we believe, is part of that. We hope the Establishment Clause right now, as you look at where the Islamic House is, we are at that same stage that the Founding Fathers and before in the Enlightenment were in the 16th, 17th, and 18th century. That's where Islam is today. And we need to begin to support Muslims that are against theocracy and believe in American ideas. I believe the civil rights movement of today is inside the mosques. Not just about the 1% of American Muslims, but about those globally who are a quarter of the world's population. Because listen, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll leave you with this. If we, Amer if we Muslims get this wrong, if Iran gets a nuclear weapon, if the Islamists and the militants continue to dominate our countries, the world will never be safe. A quarter of the world's population cannot continue to get their theology wrong and, and not believe in religious freedom and continue to leave the rest of the world alone. That's not their plan. So we need to have an offense. We've not had an offense. We've been playing whack-a-mole. We've been playing defense for generations. And the time is now to stop. And as a conservative, I'm here to tell you it's time to take offense in the ideas of liberty. This is our Muslim reform movement. There are many of us doing this work, not just our organization. We have a declaration. Find it. If Muslims support this declaration, they're part of the solution. If they reject it, they're part of the problem. Our legacy is to believe in American values and build institutions that do that. Find my podcast, Reform This. Find our websites, Take Back Islam, and our Muslim Reform Movement website. Here's my contact points. God bless.